Amen. Amen. Again. All right. Number six and 23. Well, let's say 22. Number six and 22. Number six and 22. How many of you have it? Say amen if you have it. Number six and 22. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them. Now let me stop right there for a moment, because we have now, because of the Lord Jesus Christ, become the spiritual Israel. And so we can take this scripture and apply it to ourselves, because through him we are now connected into the royal family of God. We have been engrafted into the tree of life through Christ. And so he says, speak to the children of Israel. The Lord Bless thee and what? The Lord make his face what? And be. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give you what? And the Lord shall put and they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will what? I will what? Say it again. I will what? All right, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I had to use that scripture in order to bring you to where I'm going this morning. Uh, My subject is coming from 2 Kings, the third chapter, and you're welcome to go there. 2 Kings, the third chapter, and the 13th verse. 2 2 Kings, the third chapter, and the 13th verse. Elijah addressed the king of Israel. What do you and I have in common? Go consult the puppet prophets of your fathers and mothers. Never said the king of Israel. It's God who has gotten us into this fix, dumping all three of us kings into the hands of Moab. Elijah said, as God of the, of the angel army lives and before whom I stand ready to serve, If it weren't for the respect I have for Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I wouldn't give you the time of day. But considering being me a minute, but but considering bring me a minstrel. When the minstrel played, the power of God came on Elijah. He then said, God's word, dig ditches. Look at somebody said dig ditches. Dig ditches all over this valley. Here's what's happening. You won't hear the wind. You won't see the rain. But this valley is going to be full of water. And your army and your animals will drink their fill. This is easy for God to do. He will also hand over Moab to you. You will revenge the country knock out the fortifications, level the key ve- uh, villages, clear cut the orchards, clog the streams and litter the cultivated fields with stone. I wish you look at your neighbor really quickly and say, neighbor, I'm fighting for, I'm fighting for my commanded blessing. My For those of you that 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 might be new to what I'm talking about, I've been somewhat stressing this ever since December, that when you look in the book of Numbers, you see that God has given us a commanded blessing. God has given us a blessing that is irrevocable. He has given you and I a blessing that we must be blessed. And no matter what the enemy does or no matter how hard he comes, we have to fight for our commanded blessings. Even though God has has given it to us in our own flesh, in our own minds, we must start fighting for the things that God has given us. Right now, somebody can tell you they're giving you a hundred dollars but if you make no attempt to get it you make no attempt to hold out your hand you make no attempt to grab it it's just a hundred dollars that's promised to you 
But I believe that in this time and in this season that we're in, that God wants to do some phenomenal things. I believe in the midst of it that the enemy will come, but God has given us the victory over the enemy. How many believe that? I believe that God is getting ready to do some things that is going to blow our minds. As we move forward into this season of commanded blessings, it's going to take faith to possess the promises of God. You can't do it without faith. We must understand that our season is not without challenge. Please hear me. The season that God is bringing the church world in is not without challenge challenge. Everywhere the enemy can plant seeds of doubt, he will. He's going to try to get you to forget what God has promised you. He's going to try to get you not to stand on the word of God. He's going to try to convince you that every little place in you that is having some problems that you're going to fail, that is going to collapse who you are. He is going to try to convince you that you cannot achieve the things that God said that you can achieve. I just want you to know that our commanded blessing is worth the fight, is worth the battle, is worth, hello somebody, is worth standing up and decreeing and declaring that all the things that the Bible has promised to me, I'm going to grab hold to them, I'm going to hold them and not let them go, and I'm going to live my life in expectation of what God is doing in my life. I'm not going to be sidetracked by the enemy where he convinces me that what God has promised is not going to happen. As a matter of fact, I need to get to a place. Look at somebody said, don't believe what you see. Don't believe what you hear. If it's going against God's blessing for you. Yeah, the enemy wants you. He wants you and I to be down, to be distressed. He wants you and I to feel helpless and hopeless. He wants us to believe that there is no way that we'll come out of whatever we're in. But don't you remember what God said in his word that the devil is a liar? Hmm. The devil wants you and I to fall into places of old things and old patterns of life and old habits. He wants us to fall prey and victim to the things that happened even on last year that were negative in the lives of God's people. He wants us to go back and rewind defeats and rewind all the places that we did not come up to par. He wants us to put that tape on in our mind and rewind it over and over again. He wants us to start remembering that. You remember on last year when you screwed up? You remember on last year when things didn't go right? But I need you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, that was then. This is now. Come on and give God a hand praise. I don't know about you. But I still believe in miracles. I, Sister Jack, I still believe in miracles. I still believe. I still believe in miracles. I still believe in the power of God. I believe in his power. I made a choice to think on the things of God and trust God at his word. I've just made up my mind that no matter what comes, no matter what forces come against me, no matter what tries to unsettle my mind and cause me to go into a frenzy. I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to trust God. That is why when you go in my office here and go in my office at home, one of the first things you'll see is Isaiah's scripture. Y'all don't want to hear me. 41 and 10 from the Message Bible. And the first clause that it says, don't 
panic. I'm believing God that if we don't panic, that God is going to come to our rescue. I'm believing that if we don't panic, some things that have happened are going to turn around. As a matter of fact, I believe if we don't panic, God is going to bless us like never before. I wish you just nudge somebody real gently and tell them, so don't you panic, don't you panic. Come on, nudge him again. Don't you panic. Don't you panic. The devil has a way of making us panic and making us feel like everything is coming unglued. He has a way of making us nervous, Brother Laurel, to the point that we won't even give God praise because we're so caught up on what's going on that we won't clap our hands. We won't open our mouths. We won't do all oh God. We might do a little bit at church, but he'll make us so nervous that as soon as we get out the door. All we can think about is all the things that are swirling around and things that I'm dealing with and things that are coming at me from all directions and things that won't let me rest. But I came to let you know that if you ain't been getting a good night's sleep, after you hear this word today, you're going to sleep like a baby tonight. Ah, y'all don't talk to me because the enemy is going to have to get up off you. You ever had somebody standing too close to you and you look at them and they don't move and you look at them again and they don't move and finally you say hey get up off me ah you gotta tell the devil today hey get up off me I, I ain't putting up with it anymore I'm not I'm not gonna let you mess with my head anymore do I have anybody here that still believe in miracles There is a commanded blessing over our lives. Therefore, we can't allow, watch this, we can't not allow circumstances to dictate our behavior. We can't let circumstances dictate our behavior. I'm going to say that again. We can't allow circumstances to dictate our behavior. Jesus died and rose again to free you and I from the strength of Satan. Whatever you're going through, whatever you face, God says in his word, I already know what I'm thinking about you. I already know the plans that I have for you. I've already carved out a future and a hope for you. I've already got your name written down right now. And I won't let anybody put an ending to your story but me. You ever read a good book in the middle of the book, somebody done tore out pages and things, and you get right to the last chapter, and somebody done tore out the last chapter, and you like, wonder what happened, wonder what happened. God says, I moved the last chapter out of Satan's way, so he don't even know the blessings that I've got for you in the end. But your 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 end is going to be greater than your beginning. I'm going to do more for you in the latter times than I did in the former times, and if you can remember Remember that, and you can believe that you'll start praising God right now. Being fearful is not an option. We must embrace this time and this season like our future depends on it because it does. We have the life-changing power of Jesus Christ living within us. If we choose, we can walk in victory. That does not mean that our faith will not be challenged. Just because I believe don't mean my faith won't be challenged. Your faith got to be challenged to prove what kind it is. Your faith got to be challenged to see whether or not it's the kind of faith that God desires you to have. You can tell me you got faith all day long, but if you ain't never faced opposition, if you ain't never been knocked to your knees, if you ain't never been pushed up against the wall, you ain't got the faith you talking about. If you ain't never went through the fire, if you ain't never had to pray until you couldn't pray no more, you ain't got no faith. My faith being challenged does not change the fact 
that is our time and our season for God's commanded blessing. His blessing is upon us right now. And I don't know how I can get this over any more than I have been doing. Because it seems like every time I try to go somewhere else and prepare a message, God always brings me back to letting the people of God know that this is our time and this is our season. For too long, we've gone by how we feel. Feeling ain't got nothing to do with this. It's belief. What I believe. Do I believe that God is going to come through on everything that he said? Look at somebody and say, I just believe. Come on, tell somebody else, I just believe. I just believe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just believe. I just believe. I just can't be fearful. I got to believe. I got to believe. In Psalms 34, 17 through 19, it says this. Is anyone crying for help? God is listening, ready to rescue you. If your heart is broken, you'll find God right there. If you're knocked in the gut, Oh, God, he'll help you catch your breath. Disciples so often get into trouble. Still, God is there every time. So no matter what you're going through, the blessing of God is still on your life. Stop letting the devil convince you that because you hit a wall, because you hit an impasse, that God is upset with you and the blessings of God is not on your life. Stop letting the devil convince you because you lost this or lost that or because this didn't come through, that didn't come through, that the commanded blessing is not on your life. Anybody who's been out in the sun for a long time have to watch themselves because you'll get an optical illusion. You'll start seeing things that are not really there. You'll start believing things that don't even exist. And so you have to catch your breath, baby, and believe God. Shake yourself and say, God, I need to see what your word has declared. You need to open your mouth and start speaking it on a daily basis. I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. It ain't nothing the devil can do about it. I'm blessed and I'm, I'm going to say it again. I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. It might not look like it to you, but on the inside, God is working something out for me. I'm blessed and I'm high. Would you high five your neighbor and tell him I'm blessed and I'm highly favored? We're preparing for a move of God, not because we deserve it, but because God has commanded that we be blessed. Our text reveals that God's delivering Israel, even though they did not deserve it, even though they shouldn't be delivered, God loved them so much that he was delivering them. You know what? We can count on God. We can count on our God to do just what he says. When I look at at Ephesians 3 and the 20th and the 21st verse, it says this, God can do anything, you know, for more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. Woo. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us, his spirit deeply and gently within us. Glory to God in the church. Glory to God in the Messiah, in Jesus. Glory down all generations. Glory through all millennial. Oh, yes. Glory to God. In other words, God just didn't leave off blessing Israel. God says, I still have some blessings for you. As a Matter of fact, God says, no matter what, I'm going to come through for you. I'm going to show up. I'm going to let that commanded blessing be over your head. Now, you've got to get some oomph. you got to have some gumption. you got to start fighting for what God said you could have. you got to stop sitting around like you lost your best friend. you got to stop sitting around like you can't catch your breath. You need to get up and start fighting for what you believe. I don't know about you, but I'm not taking it. I told my wife, Mission near Hester on yesterday. I said, I'm going down to the hospital to see my daughter, our daughter, Shalajah. She said, okay. I said, I'm going because I'm tired of the devil. I'm going down and let him know that I 
don't accept anything that he says. I don't believe him. I don't accept it. Why? Because the God that I serve is able. You better get to the place where you start believing God so much that in the face of disaster, you keep on saying, thank you, Jesus. In the face of disaster, you keep raising up your hand. In the face of disaster, you keep saying, God is, God is, God is. What is he? He's the strength of my life. God is, God is. God can do anything. Ah, you need to remind your neighbor, look at him and say, didn't you know that the God we serve can do anything? Woo, clap your hands and praise him. It's not unusual for God to place something before us that will challenge our faith just before the commanded blessings are released. Without God, what God allows is never meant to kill our faith, but to put our faith on display. God never wants what you and I are going through to diminish and kill our faith. It was never meant for that. It was that our faith be put on display that others around us can see that we serve a God that we believe in that others can see even when we're going through hellacious situations that other folk will look and say how did they make it through that? How did they do that? How did they stand in the midst of that. How did they keep their head up? And we can say, because our God is mighty. Because our God is from everlasting to everlasting. Because our God, he keeps on doing great things for us. He keeps bringing us out. He keeps delivering us. How did you make it through the wilderness? I came through because of my God. My God is able to ex- do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I ask to think. How did you make it through the divorce? My God, help me. How did you make it through the loss of the house or the loss of the car? My God, help me. He held me up when I couldn't hold myself up. He came alongside of me and said, I got you. Have God got anybody in here? Has he ever come along? alongside you and place his huge arms around you and say, even though you feel dizzy right now and your equilibrium is gone, I'm God. I got you. I got you. I'm not going to let you fall. I'm not going to let you be destroyed. As a matter of fact, when you come out of this, oh, I felt that. When you come out of this, you're coming out with your hands up. You're coming out with a praise on your lips. You're coming out stronger than you've ever been before. You're coming out with a thank you, Jesus. You're coming out saying, God, I know now of a surety that you are the God who can do anything. I know now, God, when your word says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. I know now that you were telling me, ain't no need in worrying because you got me right now. I wish I had about seven people that believe God's got you right now, that you believe it enough that you begin to praise him because you know God's got you right now. I wish I had about six people who've been dealing with some stuff that you'll go to praising God right now because I hear the Lord saying that your next praise is going to get rid of the stuff. You've got to be willing. You've got to be willing to fight the good fight of faith. You've got to be willing to take hold of salvation. You've got to be willing to believe God that in every situation, he's still God. Nothing gets him off the throne, baby. He's still God. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Let me finish this. Can I share something with you? You can start crying right now. And cry till tomorrow this time. And it won't move God at all. You can get depressed right now. And stay depressed the next three weeks. And it won't move God at all. But when out of your mouth. You start to decree and declare the things of God. When out of your mouth. You start to say, I will not, I shall not. I'm not going to allow the enemy to keep me where I am. 
am. I'm not going to let him make me live beneath what God has promised for me. And so I'm going to get up in my mind. And once I get up in my mind, I'll get up in my flesh. I'm going to get up in my mind so that my legs will get strength. I'm going to get up in my mind so that my arms will move right. I'm going to get up in my mind so that I'll be able to go to the door, unlock the door, get in my vehicle, and get away from whatever it is that's bringing me all this stress. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to decrease my stress and I'm going to increase my joy of the Lord because the Bible said that the joy of the Lord has become our strength. And so I'm going to have the joy of the Lord deep down in my soul. I'm going to start believing that God can do it. I'm going to get happy. I don't know about y'all. I'm going to get happy. I'm getting the glad glass. Y'all looked at me like I'm crazy, but you better get the glad glass. Nudge your neighbor and say, you ought to get happy about something. Something. Saints sitting around rehearsing their problems and rehearsing their situations and, and rehearsing their shortcomings and rehearsing, oh, you know, you know this happening, oh, you know that happening, oh, you know this happening. Well, I got news for you. There's a story in the Bible about a Shubanite woman, and God blessed the Shubanite woman to have a child that she didn't even ask for. But right after she had the child, about a year later, the child died. And when the Shubanite woman went, to see the prophet to tell the prophet about the child being dead. The prophet sent his servant Gehazi and Gehazi went to the woman when he seen her coming and said, is everything all right? And the woman said, all is well. Now, how do you say all is well when your baby is dead at home? So all is well. He asked again. He said, well, how's everything? All is well. How's your husband? All is well. How's the child? All is well. Why? Because she had touched the place a faith in herself that she believed not even death can separate us from the power and love of God. When she got to the man of God, the man of God said, how's everything? She said, all is well. And then she began to tell him the story about the child. And the man of God said, let me send my service. She said, I ain't going for that. I'm going to say right here, man of God, until you go with me. I don't want a secondhand miracle. I want a firsthand. Look at somebody. To say, I don't want a secondhand miracle. I want a firsthand miracle. I want God to do it for me. And so as she said that, the man of God got up and went with her. When he got there, the child was dead. But the man of God prayed and God answered his prayer. I come by to tell you, if your dream is dead, if the situation is dead, if your hope is dead, there's resurrection power in the name of Jesus. If your marriage is dead, God can bring it back alive. If your relationship with your children is dead, God can bring it back alive. Oh, victory and praise. It's time to live out our name. There's victory in our praise. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, how's things going with you? Tell them all is well. Ask them, how's things going with your family? Tell them all is well. Well, how's things going on your job? Tell them all is well. How's things going in your marriage? Tell them all is well. Even though you know storms are coming and floods are on the horizon, but God is greater than anything that can happen to us. Oh, I feel a preach coming on. It is because of the goodness of God that I stand in this pulpit this morning. He's been better than me that I could have ever imagined. He's done so many wonderful things that I cannot tell it all. That I have some hard times. Oh yes I did. But God has always brought me out. Let me stop there. Clap your hands and praise him. Sit down, sit down. I got to get through with this. You got to fight for your commanded blessing. To sit around him. And let the devil take what God says you can have. Don't do it. Don't do it. You tell the devil you a liar. I ain't got to sit here and go back and forth with you. What God said I can have, I can have. Mm. In 2 Kings 4 and 3, it says this. 
Here's what you do, said Elijah. Go up and down the streets and borrow jugs and bowls from all your neighbors. And not just a few. All you can get. Then come home and lock the door behind you. And you and your sons pour all into the container. When each is full, set it aside. Anybody remember that story? The widow woman husband had died. The collectors were coming and they wanted to make sure that they got their money. And even said to the point, if you can't pay us, we're going to take your sons and we're going to make them bond servants. But when the man of God came by, the woman of God reminded the man of God how faithful her husband had been to God. And the man of God said, what do you have? She said, I ain't got no more little oil. He said, I tell you what, go borrow some vessels. I want to tell you something, saints of God, that in this season of commanded blessings, you ain't got to have a whole lot to start with. If you believe God, the little that you have to start with is going to blossom into more than you ever expected. She went to her neighbor's house and borrowed as many empty vessels as she could. And the Bible says she came back, closed the door, and started pouring the oil. And the oil never stopped flowing until all the vessels were completely full. God's blessing on you and I in this season is not going to stop till he has fulfilled everything. Thing that he promised. I need you to understand that what God is doing right now for each and every one of you, when you look around right now, you say, oh, I was a little scared. Everybody didn't show up. Don't bother me at all. Don't worry me at all because I know the blessings that God has for my life. Don't bother. You take the little that God has given you. Well, I ain't got much money. Take the little that God has given you. You pray over it and watch and see what God going to do. I'll go this far to say that the next time you go to get something that you need, God is going to allow you to get it and it's not going to even be in your strength. God's going to do it because he loves you. Stop sitting around whining and complaining and not believing God. Shake your neighbor and say, it's my season, it's my time. Come on, tell them again, it's my season and it's my time. In 2 Kings 5 and 10, it says this, And Elijah sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come clean again, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean clean. This was Naaman and the prophet was telling Naaman because he was a leper to go and do something that he did not want to do. But understand this, he wanted him to do something that he really didn't want to do. That's why I read for uh, 2 Kings 4 and 3 to you a few more minutes ago because first the faith comes, then the blessing. There was no blessing of all until her faith came. When the man of God sent her, then the faith came. Now we have Elijah talking to Naaman. There was no healing without obedience. In this season of commanded blessing, we must walk the walk and talk the talk. We've got to be obedient to the things of God. And oh, you know the story. I don't have to go too long about it. But Naaman didn't want to go down and watch because Jordan was nasty. And the other uh, streams where he came from were clean and beautiful. But his little servant told him, say, if the man of God would have asked you something hard, if he'd have told you to go conquer some armies, you'd have did that. But all he said is go down and wash in Jordan. And if you're dip down seven times Uh, on the seventh time you're going to be healed but seven is God's number of completeness and I drop by to tell you today that if you'll be obedient to God in this season of commanded blessings that you won't be able to get away from your blessing that your blessing will run you down uh, and it will take you over I wish I had about ten people that believe God this morning that God is getting ready 
ready to flip the script on you. He's getting ready to turn things on you. He's getting ready to let you know some things uh, that are coming down the pike. Is there anybody that's been expecting some stuff? If you've been expecting some stuff, look at your neighbor and say, get ready. Because what you're expecting is about to happen now. Come on, tell them, start looking for checks in the mail. Start looking for pre-approvals on stuff that you really need. Start looking for folk that owe you to pay you back. Somebody that's been owing you money for the longest. and They act like they don't even know it. You're getting ready to get paid back. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to take it too. Ah, you better get ready. You better get ready because God is going to bless you. I believe God is going to give us a double double. I believe he's going to bless us going in and coming out. I believe that God's going to double up on it. I believe the Lord is saying you've been through enough hell and high water. And now I just want to bless you. I want to do some wonderful things for you. I want to turn your situation around. I wish you nerd your neighbor and say, if you get with this. You're going to see the power of God. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of promises. I want to see some action. Y'all don't want to talk to me. I want to see some action, baby. I want to see God go on and do what he said he'd do. It's like the husband who promises the wife. I'm going to buy you a new ring, but you've been married 40 years and ain't got a new ring yet. Promises, promises, promises. But God says, watch what I do. I'm going to blow your mind. I'm going to not only show you the promise, but then I'm going to manifest the promise. I'm going to let it come set in your lap. Walk up your driveway. Knock on your door. Come in your house. Walk through every room. I'm going to make it meet you at your car. You're going to go in to work and I'm going to let it meet you at work. You ain't going to be able to get away from the manifestation of the promises that I said I'd do for you. As a matter of fact, folk going to start looking at you like you lost your right mind. They're going to start saying to you, what in the world is wrong with you. Have you taken some happy pills? You must be on drugs or something. But you're going to tell them I'm getting high of the blessings of God. He's coming right there into your place and doing what he promised he'd do. If you believe it right now, why don't you give him a praise? Now, you know, if I was God, and y'all gave me something like that when I'm telling you I'm getting ready to bless you. I'll be like, all right, thump. <laughs> Why don't you give him a praise that you believe that he's doing what he's saying? God bless you. Uh, Hosea 10 and 12. Hosea 10 and 12 says this, sold to yourself in righteousness, reap mercy, break up the fallow ground for it's time, it's time, it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. The commanded blessing comes to those who are prepared to believe God for the victory. You got to break up. What is the fallow ground? The fallow ground is the places that have not been tilled over. If you were a farmer, you would understand that. The fallow ground hadn't been turned over and hadn't been put ready uh, to be planted. God says the places in your life that you have not given him, that you have not surrendered to him. You need to let him turn those places over. I remember years and years ago, there was a poem that talked about, a lady talked about God coming to her house and said that the Lord came to her house and he came in the living room and everything was cool. And he went to the kitchen and everything was cool and she was praising God. And then he went to the bedroom and everything was cool. And every place that he went, everything was cool. But then the Lord said, I want to go to your attic. And she panicked because she knew that all her mess was up in the attic. She knew that all her doubts and fears were in the attic. She knew that all her lies and cheating was in the attic. She knew that everything that she could imagine wrong, she had put in the attic. But Jesus said, no, I want to go right there. I want to go right where all the mess seals because what she didn't understand that he is a straightener up a mess that he'll come in the middle of your mess and straighten your mess up I wish I had somebody that understand me ain't nobody up in this place right now is without fault there are things
things that all of us are working to overcome. But Jesus is saying, let me come in into the place that you've been hiding from me. The place that you say, oh, no, no, nobody can come in there. Nobody can come in my place of sorrow. Nobody can come in my place of grief and hurt. I don't want anybody in there. You cannot, Jesus, no, no. You can't come into my place. But Jesus is a perfect gentleman. He won't force his way in. But he'll say, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. I need you to let me in your attic. Because in your attic, the stuff there is stopping my commanded blessing from raining down on you. You've got to let me come into the mess. You've got to let me come into the fear. You've got to let me come into the doubt. You've got to let me come into the apprehension. You've got to let me come right in there. Because he wants to come in there and move everything out. I don't know about you, but I'm unlocking my attic door. And I'm saying, Jesus, you're welcome to come on in. Come into my attic. Mess some stuff up for me. Isn't anybody got an attic today that you need to let Jesus come up in? I dare you to unlock it right now and invite the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings to come right in. Why don't you say it with me? Come on in, Jesus. Make yourself at home. Come on in, Jesus. Have a seat right there. That seat is depression. But when Jesus sat on the seat of depression, depression then will become joy. Because his joy is our strength. I wish I had somebody that understood me. That God is working some stuff out. You're not even going to leave here today the way you came. God is shifting some stuff. He's moving some stuff. And you getting ready to enter a blessed place in your life. Jesus Christ is saying today is the day that I turn things around. That I make things new for you. I didn't come this far to fail now. I believe James Cleveland said it. I don't believe that he brought me this far to just leave me. He brought me now that I can be a blessing and he can bless me too. Look at your neighbor says my time and my season in John 9 and 7 and it says this and said unto him go wash in the pool of Siloam he went his way therefore and washed and came seeing this was the blind man this man was this man was strategically setting in the right place at the right time for a blessing from God is the right time right now and is the right season right now for a commanded blessing to be on you look at your neighbors and neighbor you might need to shift from where you are just a little bit. You might need to move over, Tad, because your commanded blessing is coming your way. Sometimes you have to move from where you are to get what God's got for you. Oh, I like it, Mimi. She moved from one seat to another. You better hear what I'm saying today. Sometimes where you've been sitting is not good for you anymore. And you have to move from from one place to another but let your neighbor know that I'm packing my stuff right now I'm getting ready to move into a new place with God I'm getting ready to move into a greater place with God as I take my seed the people of God dug the holes like the prophet said but they dug them by favor God did not let them down the Bible Bible says that by morning the ditches were filled with water. Whenever, whenever God says he'll do a thing, he'll do 
just that. The result was a commanded blessing. God told him, if you do it, I'll fight your battle. And if you read the text, it said that the Moabites came out and the sunlight hit the water and it looked like blood. And they thought that Israel and the other armies with them had fought each other and killed one another. So they let down their guard and ran toward them, hoping to get everything they could get. But look at God. When they showed up, Israel was ready to fight. The devil's going to thank you dead. But when he show up, you're going to be ready to fight. Tell your neighbor, I'm up for a fight. Come on, tell him I'm up for a fight. This morning, let's remember the words of Psalm 23 and 3. But thou art holy, thou art holy, O thou that inhabits the praises of Israel. If you believe, it's your time and it's your season to be blessed like never before. It's your time and it's your season to fight for the commanded blessing. Say it. If you believe it, then you'll praise God. Not just any kind of praise. An undiluted praise that is not filled with doubt or unrestricted praise that is not filled with embarrassment. A praise that says, I really don't care what you think about me. When you see me, praise God. Shout glory. I'm just reminded of King Saul and Brother David. The Bible says that when David became king and defeated his enemies, he came dancing, shouting and praising God. Look at somebody say, when the last time? You actually danced in the presence of God. Come on, tell them when the last time that you cut your step. Everybody want to go to the club and dance at the club. But we got to dance that's better than the club. When was the last time that you felt them in your legs? That you felt them in your feet? When was the last time that you felt a sanctified shaking your body? Grab your neighbor by the hand and tell them, neighbor, before he gets through, I'm going to shout to the glory of God. Look at him and say, don't play with me. Before he gets through, I'm going to get my praise on. I'm going to shout and give God praise. Say, praise. Brings us closer to God. Praise is not about us. It's about God. It takes a selfless person to praise God. Because the first thing the devil tell you is everybody looking at you. You're going to make a fool of yourself. You out there praising like you ain't got no sense. And that's what happened with David's wife. She seen him praising God because the ark was coming coming back. It represents the presence of God. And David danced until he danced out of his clothes. She looked out the window and seen him and got disgusted with him. And when he got home, said, look at you. You're the king. And you're running around dancing out of your clothes. You're supposed to be dignified. You're over all the people. But David remembered that it was the Lord my God who gave me the kingdom. It was the Lord my God who let me kill the lion. It was the Lord my God who let me kill the bear. I praise him whether you like it or not. I'll shout to the glory of God whether you like it or not have I got about 20 people that got a I don't care praise I don't care how you look at me I don't care what you say about me he's been too good for me not to praise him he's been too kind for me not to praise him is there anybody here that has a praise on 
on your lips. Say yeah. Reach out and get somebody and tell your neighbor he's already blessed me. He's already delivered me and he keeps doing great things for me. Can I give a testimony? Sister Jackie should have been dead but God allowed you to come through the wreck with my injury that was repairable. It could have taken your life. That's a praise worthy event. Shout yeah. I don't know about you but I've gotten to this place that I praise him anyway. I seen last week Deacon Chapel got sick while we were out to dinner with the family but the saints came together and prayed and believed God and God gave us direction and he's here today. Somebody ought to praise God. Had he done anything for you that's praiseworthy? Has he done anything for you that'll make you clap your hands? Has he done anything for you that'll make you jump up and down? Has he done anything for you that'll make you run and holler? Has he done anything for you that'll cause you to say, I really don't care how you look at me. I'm going in all the way. I need something from God that you can't give me. I need something from God that only my praise will get. I need something from God. I don't need it tomorrow. I need it today. I don't need it tonight. I need it right now. I need God to show up big time. I need God to come through right now. Say yeah. So I realize that praise is a weapon to fight off the enemy. So I'm going to praise him right where I am. I'm going into warfare right where I am. I'm going to say thank you. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for delivering me. Shout yeah. Look at your neighbor. Grab him by the hand and say, neighbor, let me qualify this. If you ain't a praiser, you might ought to let my hand go right now. Because if you're not a praiser, you ain't going to like what I'm about to do. But grab them by their hand. Pull on it a little bit. And say, may I have this praise with you. Praise him! Praise him. Praise thunders in the ears of the Almighty and echoes through the halls of heaven itself. Praise is the sympathy played in the midst of the angels of God. The angels dare to look into the salvation we have. I praise him for his mercy. I praise him for his blessing. I praise him for his goodness. Praise will tear down walls. Praise will raise up a standard. Praise will hold the devil at bay. Praise will cause a collapsing situation to be stable. Lives. Praise, praise will shake the very foundations of our soul. Praise will ignite revival. Praise is a garment that removes heaviness. If you're weighed down, if you're feeling heavy, if you go to praising Him, the garment of heaviness will be moved. Because of praise, uh, say yeah, say yeah, praise him, uh, hallelujah, uh, hallelujah. Grab somebody by the hand and tell them I need you to help me because I've been a little heavy lately. 
but I feel my help coming on. Come on, tell him I've been a little down, but I feel my strength coming back. Tell him I've been a little worried, but I feel my breakthrough is on the way. Take him by the hand as a neighbor. Come on and take a victory lap because my praise, my praise is coming out. I dare you to praise him. I dare you to take that lap. says don't you dare give up on him remember I told you it ain't over it ain't over no 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 you got to hear me it ain't over this walk that you do I want you to run 